is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 mazda cx9 courtesy of jack giambalvo mazda in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because there are several changes for the 2023 model year including a ton of new standard features which of course we'll be going over in this video not only that I remember always loving the steering feel of the CX-9 and I can already tell you it is a heavy steering field. I love it. Definitely gives the driver more feeling of being in control of this one. So I am going to have fun in this one. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 cx9 first one being the touring starting at thirty-eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars touring plus for forty one thousand five hundred carbon edition for forty four thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars grand touring for forty five six forty and lastly the signature going for forty eight thousand four hundred and sixty dollars and by the way all-wheel drive comes standard on every single trim level across the board. I remember the last time I reviewed the CX-9, that was definitely not the case. So, big fan of that. And yet another update, there is no more sport trim level for 2023 as well, in case you didn't notice. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the 2023 CX-9 is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 250 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 320 pound-feet of torque, coming at 2500 rpm power sent to all four wheels through a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters for the carbon edition trim level and up so therefore we do have them today so we will be testing those out as well zero to 60 is going to come in at approximately 7.2 seconds red line 6300 rpm with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 26 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel that's what's recommended but those power numbers i just gave you that was for the premium unleaded fuel so there is slightly reduced power numbers if you would have put regular unleaded fuel however you can do that but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the cx9 i wanted to mention to you guys the drive mode or drive mode i should say it's singular there is a sport mode located directly to the left of the shift there's a little toggle switch for it but essentially that'll adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response and so now have we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the cx9 here to the test and Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 CX-9 here up to speed. All right, so I got into sport driving mode here. There actually is a manual shift mode. If you slide the shifter all the way to the left, that gives you full control over the shifting. So we're gonna test out the paddle shifters here. Let's see what we got. Meh. Slight delay. It's honestly not that bad. I've actually tested out paddle shifters that were well worse than this. So it's pretty much average. It's not something, honestly, I think people are gonna use all that much. Having said that, I do like that they're on this CX-9 because what you can do is when it snows out here in Pennsylvania and you're going down a hill, you can use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of downshifting, a little bit of engine braking, more or less. So you'll not actually have to hit the brakes when you're going down a hill and risk sliding off the road. So they're good for that reason, but I probably wouldn't use them personally just because there is a little bit of a delay to them. But anyways, now having got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this thing up to speed. All right, let's do a little bit of a rolling start here in three, two, one, go baby. There it is. Not bad, not bad. This thing gets up to speed quick. Definitely not gonna have any issues. I just realized I'm in kilometers per hour, so I have no clue how fast that was in miles per hour. But yeah, this thing definitely will get you up to speed. Even going up a hill there, you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. Quite honestly, zero to 60 is 7.2 is dang impressive for a three row SUV. So that's perfectly fine. You're not gonna have any issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 123 feet, which quite honestly, that's plenty respectable, especially for a three row SUV. Most three row SUVs will come in right around 130 feet. I've seen as high as 139. So 123, that's plenty fine. This braking feel is perfectly fine. It's definitely, it's actually kind of on the firmer side of things, which I appreciate. You usually don't find that in three row SUVs. It's usually kind of on the softer side. So 
absolutely no issues there. This guy's sitting in the middle of the road. We're just going to pass him. Anyways, touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. But the real cooker, the real selling point of the CX-9, if you guys have never driven one, you have to for this one particular reason. This steering feel is dang brilliant. By far the best steering feel in its class without a question. So many three row SUVs have such loosey goosey steering feels. There's no driver emotion to them whatsoever. This thing feels like you're driving a, I don't know, a Miata steering feel in a three row SUV. It's absolutely wonderful. This is the steering feel I personally would choose every single day if I'm getting any kind of vehicle for that matter. It's absolutely wonderful. So I can't emphasize that enough. It really is quite brilliant. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 60 kilometers right now. And you guys can tell there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin here. I really got to switch that up. Anyways, cabin noise is perfectly fine. I got the air on. That's about all you can probably hear through the mic right now. Touching on visibility. Honestly, because we have that third road down right now, I'm not sure how much the headrest would impede that visibility, but right now it's brilliant. I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back, so definitely not going to have any issues there. Not only that, though, when it comes to forward visibility, rain-sensing windshield wipers actually come standard on every single trim level across the board. You don't always get that coming standard. A lot of times it'll be just found on the upper trim levels of other manufacturers, so big fan of that as well. And if you were to go with the Grand Touring or the Signature, you will get what I am currently looking looking at right now which is a head-up display you got your speed and speed limit displayed up on your windshield here along with any safety features if it's needed so that is pretty cool for forward visibility as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 mazda cx-9 all right and so here she is you guys the new 2023 mazda cx-9 finished in snowflake white Pearl. What a cool name for an exterior color. One of the better ones I've heard in a while, but let's go ahead and start up front as always. Ground clearance is actually going to come in at 8.8 .8 inches, which is a little above average for its class, so that's pretty good. Uh, as far as where this one is made, it is made in Japan. You can tell by the J, the first character of the VIN there, so that is pretty cool as well. Chrome front grille will come standard on the Touring, Grand Touring, and Signature trim levels. However, if you were to go with that Touring Plus or Carbon Edition, you will actually get a dark front grille, so wanted to emphasize that also though if you go with the signature trim you're actually going to get a unique front grill with led grill accent lighting that's one of the coolest features that mazda does on this cx9 i've seen that at night it looks absolutely wonderful but to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard on every single trim level across the board so you got that added illumination at night no matter what trim level that you go with so we gotta love that led fog lights though down below also coming standard on every single trim level across the board and let me actually show you where they're at because they're tiny but i do remember reviewing the cx9 in 2021 and they did not have that coming standard on all trim levels so for 2023 because i skipped the 2022 model year they do now so i definitely am a big fan of that and if you were to go with the carbon edition trim level and up you're actually going to get an adaptive front lighting system meaning when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a cyclist or something like like that so that is pretty darn cool as well but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the cx9 all right so but now since we are around to the side of this one let's go ahead and start up top aluminum roof rails with satin chrome finish coming with the touring plus trim level and up you will get rear privacy glass coming standard for all trim levels across the board chrome window surrounds also coming standard across the board as well take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will get led integrated turret signals for all trims they are also heated for all trim levels across the board gotta love that automatic power folding side mirrors coming with the carbon edition trim level and up and by the way of course with the carbon edition you're going to get gloss black side mirrors i almost forgot to mention that otherwise it's body colored of course silver accents found in the side skirts for the carbon edition trim level and up or i should say chrome accents you guys can see those on the side skirts down there take a look at the wheel setup they are going to differ slightly amongst the trim levels of course 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the touring however all other trim levels are going to get 20 by 8.5 inch aluminum alloys varying in design 
design and also again they are a little bit wider for all other trim levels besides the touring so i did want to emphasize that as well but very nice looking side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the CX-9, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top there. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper affixated to the rear glass, of course. LED taillights though do come standard on every single trim level across the board, so you gotta love that. You do get some signature badging on the tailgate if you were to go with that signature trim level. Otherwise, as far as the differentiation goes, you're just gonna get all wheel drive badging if you go with the all wheel drive. I like the chrome uh, accent piece tying together the two taillights there as well, but my favorite part found all the way to the bottom here, you actually do get dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So many manufacturers these days are either tucking those exhaust outlets away or they're just not putting a finish to them. So dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the CX-9, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate for every single trim level across the board, so you gotta love that, but it is a hands-free power tailgate if you were to go with the Grand Touring or the Signature trim level, so that is definitely pretty nice. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 14.4 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 38.2 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, that is going to come in at 71.2 cubic feet. So there's quite a bit going on back there. There is some cargo lighting, of course. There's actually some in-floor storage, which you don't always get, even on th three-row SUVs. So if you were to up underneath of that cargo floor there is a little bit of in-floor storage there for maybe an ice scraper or tire inflator doohickey or whatever 12 volt power outlet back there and you do have some grocery bag hooks you can find back there then as well but so then making our way to the rear seats here third row legroom is going to come in at 29.7 inches so right around the legroom of my old ford mustang gt so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there so Definitely better left for small children. I think you could probably fit a small child back there, but adults are not gonna be comfortable in the third row. USB charging ports though, this is where it's really impressive. You almost never find USB charging ports in the third row, even on the competition. So I love that Mazda put them back there because everyone's got devices. If you got kids, they got tablets and they wanna keep them charged up. So you do have USB charging ports back there, cup holders back there as well. And by the way, third row comes with two seats in case anybody was curious, but then making our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 39.4 inches again for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there you do have two more usb charging ports for the second row passengers of course you actually get a heated second row if you go with the carbon edition trim level end up so we do have that captain's chairs now come standard for all trim levels across the board it wasn't that way in 2021 when i last reviewed this i know bench seating was available then but i actually like the captain's chairs better anyway so that gives a little pass through for the middle people to walk into the third row if they wanted to so that's pretty cool tri zoom climate control is going to come standard on all trim levels across the board and one of my other favorite parts about this one rear window sunshades coming with the carbon edition trim level and up so if you got small kids or even a newborn coming up from the hospital that is definitely going to be one that you are going to appreciate so those rear window sunshades actually cover the entire window back there as opposed to like the ones you get at walmart that clearly don't but anyways then making our way up to the front seats eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for all all trim levels across the board. You will get a six-way power adjustable passenger seat if you go with the Touring Plus trim level and up. Leather seating coming with all trim levels. Heated front seats coming with all trim levels yet again. Well done, Mazda, for that. Ventilated front seats coming with the Touring Plus trim level and up. And if you were to go with the Signature, you will get Napa leather as well. So overall, seating was plenty comfortable. I liked the lumbar adjustments. I, I liked everything about the seating, but wasn't able to find my perfect driving position exactly, basically because of the steering wheel so let's get into that real quick tilt and telescoping it will be leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board and it will actually be heated for the carbon edition trim level and up so i'm digging the heated steering though that we have with us here today because it's 46 degrees out here in pa so heated steering wheel is definitely on point i love it but having said that 
it did not telescope out as far as all of the competition. It probably telescopes out the least compared to all the other competitors here. And that's not a big deal if you're not the tallest individual in the world. So if you're as tall as my wife, who's only 5'3", this is going to be brilliant for you. But if you're a six foot adult and you got longer legs and you have to push your seat back further in order to make your legs work for the pedals, you typically have to pull out the steering wheel a little bit further to get that perfect driving position. So just want to emphasize that maybe if the steering wheel came out a little bit further, that would be pretty darn cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Mazda logo on the one side. All of your buttons though are located on the side of the key, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply keep the key in my pocket and press that engine start button located directly to the right of the gauge cluster there. And so once started up, tachometers all the way to your last speedometer is front and center. And then all of your fuel information is going to be found all the way to the right there. But there is an info button found on the left side of the steering wheel that is going to give you the ability to search between a bunch of different things within the digital speedometer like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's of course just your traditional speedometer trip a trip b of course it's also how many miles you have left until you actually need your next oil change i absolutely love that feature because it's not every 3,000 miles anymore especially if you use synthetic oil so we got 6,600 miles left until our next oil change so that is pretty darn cool as well so overall pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges, which is kind of front and center there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is actually going to come standard on every single trim level across the board. So gotta love that. Overhead LED accent lighting for the carbon edition trim level and up. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for all trim levels across the board. You actually have a frameless rear view mirror for the Touring Plus trim level and up. And of course the home light controls are right underneath of that. Aluminum interior trim for the carbon edition trim level and up. Tri-zone climate control, like I was mentioning, coming standard across the board. Wireless phone charger also for every single trim level across the board. And that's going to be located just in front of the shifter. So I absolutely love that. Honestly, interior quality is perfectly fine. I like the gloss black finish right around the shifter as well. And I like the leather shift boot. So everything is very high quality. Mazda typically does that. So it definitely looks quite nice. Just behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake. You have a couple cup holders, of course. And within the center armrest, you have a couple more you USB charging ports and a little bit of storage. Not the most I've seen for a three-row SUV, but it should be enough. But overall, interior quality is 100% perfectly fine for me, especially for the class that it's in. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Funny thing about this infotainment screen is Mazda has done in the past 10 and a quarter inch. Let me start by mentioning that, but it's not touch screen. So everything is controlled by using the circular dial and buttons located directly behind the shifter. So it is something that you uh, probably would take a second or two to get used to. But having said that, I'm sure you would get used to it. And it's pretty convenient when you're driving, of course, but when you're parked, I think Mazda should give you the ability to actually have a touch screen, at least when the vehicle is in park, because uh, a lot of times that's just quicker to find things. But anyways, overall it was pretty easy to use. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You could check out your fuel information up there if you wanted to. Factory navigation system is coming on the Grand Touring and Signature trim levels. And of course you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, for the Touring and Touring Plus, you're gonna get six speakers, but for the Carbon Edition trim level and up, you're gonna get a 12 speaker Bose surround sound system. That's the one we have today. I absolutely love that. My kids are into music like crazy, so they would absolutely love this, I have a feeling. But having said that, I haven't tested it out yet. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our Bose sound system that we have with us here today. <music> Yeah, man, my kids would love that. Ton of bass. I absolutely love that it put a Bose sound system in the CX-9 because kids like music too, man. And Bose is a very reputable company. I actually had a Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 coupe back in the day and it never failed me, never broke. And I took that car to like 150,000 miles. So that is definitely a very reputable sound system. Again, ton of bass, plenty of clarity. That is a great sound system for the CX-9. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a very high definition rear view camera, very high definition, letting you know who or what is behind you. But you also get a 360 degree monitor if you go with that grand touring trim level end up. That's gonna be that little screen to the right. 
letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, of course. Front side side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, smart city brake support with pedestrian detection, smart brake support with collision warning, and adaptive cruise control with stop and go as well. That's a good bit. Then if you were to go with the carbon edition trim level and up, that is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors, driver attention alert, and reverse automatic braking then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the CX-9, this is the best driver's three row SUV that you can get in its class right now. I'll say in this class because obviously like Porsche and the new Ferrari SUV coming out is gonna, you know. Anyways, best driver's SUV in this class without a doubt. Great safety, the IHS Top Safety Pick Plus is the highest safety rating, so you can't get better than the CX-9 with three row SUVs. Quick SUV as well, actually, for the three row. So I definitely like the acceleration on this thing. And of course, that Bose sound system, I was a 100% big fan of as well. As far as room for improvement goes, it does have less space than its competitors. So personally, I think Mazda needs a larger SUV to compete with others like the Palisade, like the Pilot, like the Highlander. I think it just needs a good bit more space to be competitive, at least here in the US market. I'm sure in Japan, it's absolutely crushing it, but in the US, we need bigger SUVs. I'm just saying. Full digital gauge cluster, I think would look pretty darn cool on this one as well. But having said that, I'm fine with analog gauges. I just like the digital gauge cluster for full customization, different colors, different loadouts, things like that. And multicolor ambient lighting, I always like to recommend for three row SUVs, especially because kids love playing around with the ambient lighting colors. So I'm just gonna put it that way. And a lot of its competitors do get that. So I wanted to mention that as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the CX-9 in the comment section below. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.